Happy Sabbath, church. Uh, I can't hear y'all. Can, can I get another happy Sabbath? Happy Sabbath, church. All right, there we go. Um, so today I'll be doing the welcome. Um, usually, Bethel always has a, a welcoming spot for me. So it's only right that I uh, give a welcome back. So I'd like to welcome all of y'all to Bethel Vision. Um, you could have been anywhere, but you chose to uh, spend your time to worship God with us today, Lord. So um, I'll start off by uh, opening with a prayer, if that's all right. So close your eyes and bow your, bow your heads. Dearly Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord. Um, now as we're about to start service, Lord, I ask you to please open our hearts and minds, Lord so that we may receive your word, Lord, and uh, hopefully take it in and carry it with us through our life journey, Lord. Um, be with us as we worship you, and, um, and we thank you again for all that you've done for us. In the name of Jesus, I pray you, amen. There is a sweet
God is good. All the time. And all the time. He's even better. He's even better. We want to thank God for allowing us to be here. This is a moment for what we call the praise report. Uh, we know that God has done so many things for you this past week. I know he has done so many things for me this past week. It's been a busy week. In spite of all the traveling, nothing happened to me that because of that I'm here today. Amen? Amen. And if there's something that the Lord has done for you this past week, uh, as we are getting ready to sing our song, Hallelujah, you have won the victory. If there's somebody that has a praise report, something that the Lord has done, you know, we can, we will be more than happy to bring you the microphone, uh, and you can just let us know what the Lord has done. So while we are waiting for you to sing our song, if you think about it, can you remind us of what the Lord has done? Good afternoon, church. Um, last Sabbath, I, I, I guess I didn't do it, but I felt like I couldn't let the Sabbath come and not give God thanks. Um, a year ago, just a few days ago, um, Christiana was born, and um, she lived to see 365 days. <laughs> and... Um, I'm just grateful to God because I remember being in the hospital with Cassie and because of, I guess I would say, lack of intervention by the doctors, we could have lost her. And um, she's here today. We have to run after her every two seconds <laughs> so that she doesn't um, pull stuff all over the place. But it just goes to show that God is good. And as long as you trust in him, he will do amazing things for you. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? The Lord has done something. The Lord has been very good. And the reason why is we have my mother here with us today. Amen. Amen. We haven't seen her since maybe a year or so. Yeah. A year and a half. So, you know, when you're far away from your mom, we speak every morning. Every morning we talk on the phone. That's, she's like my friend. I, I complain to her. You know, you don't see the face, you don't interact every day, and I'm just blessed that she's here. My sister was here and had a wonderful time together, so I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Since you, you, you talk about your mother, um, my mother just saw another birthday on Tuesday, 
And uh, I praise God because, yeah, Tuesday, right? Yeah, wow, yeah, they, they, you guys are good people, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, she saw another birthday, and at the beginning of, of the year, she almost died. Uh, contracted COVID, went through a lot, but God preserved her life. Uh, she's no longer using the, uh, the, uh, the walker. She can just walk now. Uh, God is good, you know? So when God does things for you like, uh, like this, you see, these are blessings beyond the intervention from coming in. Amen? Uh, anyone, anybody else? Anybody else has something that God has done? Because death could not hold you down. Hi guys, so my name is Francesca. I basically wanted to give a testimony because I was literally thinking about it that um, a year ago, I haven't seen my mom in like a while, like 12 plus years. And so a year ago, um, she had a stroke. It, it was like to the point where like she couldn't like walk, talk. It was like very bad and severe. And I just wanna like thank God because now a year later she's able to like walk. Like it was so bad to the point where she couldn't even like talk or anything like that. So I just wanna thank God because it's officially been a year and she's able to like walk and talk and travel and like take care of all of her business. Amen. Yes. All the time. Where's Matthew? Matthew. You are the Uh, scripture reading is found in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. And it reads, When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen. This is a moment for our prayer. We ask that you close your eyes and bow your heads as we kneel before our Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for blessing us, for guiding us, for all the many things you've done for us. We want to thank you that we had the opportunity to see another day, to wake up, to get dressed, to have food, to eat, and to be able to travel safely, to come and worship you together. 
Lord, we want to thank you for all the little things that you do on a daily that we sometimes miss or we forget to acknowledge. We want to thank you for loving us so much that you sent your only son to die on the cross for us. In this moment, Lord, as we kneel before you, we ask that you forgive us for our sins, forgive us for our bad thoughts, our bad actions. Forgive us for, for asking for forgiveness for things that we know that we are just going to turn right around and do again. We ask that you help us to change our ways and to not continue to live in the same sin. We ask that you help us to live in the truth of your Holy Spirit and live out the truths that we can be set free from our sins. We ask that you help us to travel in our daily lives and be lights to this dark world. We want to thank you that we are still able to gather together. And although we do not know exactly what the future holds, we know that you are in control. And we ask that you help us to just keep our eyes on that truth, fixated on you and nothing else of this world, because you are coming so soon that we are going to be shocked. And we ask that you help us to just continuously on the daily be prepared, prepared to join you in heaven with the angels and sing your name victorious for the rest of our days. We ask that you be with us. We ask that you bless this church. We ask that you bless all of us individually. Whatever we're going through, whatever has gone through our lives that you know and nobody else does, we ask that you help us to continue to fight and to continue to trust in you. This is our prayer, not because we are worthy, nor because we deserve it, but because you love us so much that you sent your only son to die on the cross, that you he died that we may live. We ask you these things. In your name we do pray. Amen. Um, now it's time for offertory. Um, so uh, God doesn't need your money, but uh, it's a perfect way. I mean, it's one of the ways that he uses to test your faith. And uh, in return, he'll, um, he'll bless you right back. So um, if you'd like to um, give the church money, there's baskets um, right at the door over there. And um, I believe you could also do it online. Uh, for adventistgivens.org or dot com and uh yeah that's it right there so uh i'll pray i'll pray uh for the money um dearly father thank you for all that you've done for us lord now as we're about to continue service lord i ask you to please uh be with um uh, be with us lord as we continue worship lord um and continue to do your works, Lord. Do us, do others, Lord. And uh, we thank you for dying on the cross for us. In the name of Jesus, I pray you, amen. Amen. God is good, amen. You know, I'm tired. It's been such a, such a, a busy week. So let's invite the Holy Spirit. Let's sing. Oh, come, let us
For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. For he alone he is worthy. For he alone he is worthy. For he Christ alone, Christ the Lord. One more time, Christ the Lord, Christ the Lord. God is good. God is great. We're going to sing our first song. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. For when we all get to heaven, what a wonderful day that will be. Let us sing together and give him all the glory and all the praise that he deserves. Sing, sing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop, 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 stop. Hold up, stop, stop, stop. We're all sleeping today. I know I'm tired. But this is not an excuse not to give God the glory. I want everybody to stand up. Come on, help me. Stand up. Here go. Everybody sit. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy yeah. in the mansion, bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us. Oh, when we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that. That will be when we all sing Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk, while we walk the creepy pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not Oh, when we all, when we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that that will be when we all see Jesus and shout the victory. Onward, onward to the prize before us. Soon his beauty will be whole. Soon the pearly gate We shall tread the street Oh, when we all, when we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that That will be when we all sing Jesus We'll sing and shout the victor Amen Amen. Our God is greater. Amen. Amen. Why don't you turn into wine? Open the eyes of the blind because there is no one like you. I want you all to sing with me. I know that after a long week, we're exhausted. Trust me, I get it. But we have to be grateful the fact that God gave us a chance to give him the praise. Amen. Some people right now, they cannot sing. They cannot walk. They cannot do anything. But the fact that we are here, we can sing. Let us give God the glory. Come on. Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the... There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. Here we go. None like you. Our God is greater. Hallelujah. Here we go. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. 
Awesome in power, our God. Our God. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. Our God. We're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. I want to hear you. All of you guys should sing with us. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Everybody. Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. No one like Jesus. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. We rise. There's no one like you. No one like you. None like you. How God is greater. How God is greater. How God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. How God is healer. How some in power. How God. How God. Here we go. How God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Here we go. Here we go. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then why can stand again? Then if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? Then if our God is with us, then what can stand again? Then why can stand? Then why can stand again? We're going to do it again. And if our God is for us, here we go, everybody. Here we go. Then if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then why can stand again? Then if our God is for us, and who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? Then what can stand again? How God is? How God is greater. How God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other how god is healer awesome in power our god our god amen 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 hide me now under your wings this is our last song for today before we get to the sermon i want you all to sing it with us we all know this song Hide me now. Hallelujah. Here you go. Hide me now. Under your wings. Under your wings. Cover me. Cover me. Within your mighty end. When the oceans ride and thunders roll, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and all you are God. All right. Let us all sing. We're going to do it again. Here we go. I rest my soul in Christ alone, in Christ alone. Know His power, know His power, and quietness and trust, and quietness and in trust. When the ocean rise, when the ocean rise and thunders roll. I will soar with you 
above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you. One more time. When the oceans rise and thunders roll, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over. One more time. I will be still. When the oceans rise. One more time. When the oceans rise. One more time. When the oceans rise and thunder roll, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you are God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 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 Amen. Good afternoon, Vision. Are you guys happy to be here today? I cannot hear you. I'm hearing. I'm. I'm kind of hearing grumbling. So happy to see so many of you. Hey, how you guys doing? Good to see you guys. So happy to see you. And I'm seeing, um, so happy to see you, my brother. Uh, welcome to Vision. Uh, and I uh, want to let you guys know that I have, um, my mother is here. Uh, she is here, and I'm so happy to see her looking as beautiful as ever. Uh, and uh, I'm grateful to her because because of her, I found my soulmate. Amen. <laughs> so it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I was not supposed to be preaching today, but um, when I got the call, sometimes when you get the call, you just have to, to answer the call. Amen? So um, as you guys know, I am not a preacher. Um, I Actually, I, I don't know how to preach. Um, I did not go to theology school. I went to business school. So... But I know one thing is that whatever that I will be saying won't be coming from me, but it's going to be coming from God. Amen? So with that being said, we're going to have a lot of fun this afternoon. Amen? So I want you guys to open your Bible with me. Uh, I want you guys to open your Bible with me in Luke 2, verse 52. Luke 2, verse 52. Actually, you know what? Matter of fact... Let's do this. Uh, let's start with Luke 2, verse 41. You guys with me? Luke 2, verse 41. We're going to have some fun this afternoon. Trust me. So it says, um, His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, what time, what, how old was he? What, how old was he? 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. According to what? Custom of the feast, right? When they finish the days as they return, the boy, which was Jesus, lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it. So the boy, Jesus, stayed. So they pretty much, this is what you call uh, juvenile delinquency. So they pretty much, they could not find Jesus, right? So Jesus kind of disappeared. And, uh, and I'm sure that happened to you as parent. Uh, I, I remember one day I went to the mall, the Andrew just disappeared. Actually, we went to Burlington Coat Factory, and I could not find, find him. So imagine going through the, 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 the clothing racks trying to find him. To the point that we had to go and have him being paged and somebody brought him to us. So imagine how stressful it was. And it says, um, but, sup but supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem 
seeking him. Now, so it was that after three days they found him in the temple. So do you imagine you lost your kids and you did not find him after three days? Now, if something like that had happened today, what would have had happened? A what? Ember alert, right? Right? So back in the days, they did not have ember alert. So do you imagine you lost a kid not for one hour? I mean, if I lost my kids for one, for one minute, I go nuts. Okay? Even, even, even Nathan, he's, he's 20, 20 something now. If, I, if I'm with him, I don't find him. I'm, I'm panicking. But they couldn't find him for three days. So do you imagine? I mean, we would have been on t TV. Ember Alert would have been the, the least of our issue. But that's what happened. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jer Jerusalem seeking him. Now, so it was that after three days, they found him where? In the, in the temple. Sitting in the midst of, and I want you guys to pay attention to this. Seeking in the midst of the teachers. This is a 12-year-old kid. What was he doing? He was chilling with what? With the teachers, right? Okay? Now, you know, I grew up in Haiti. <laughs> when you are a young kid, when the adults are talking, they tell you to get out, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys have... have experience that and we're like you know you know all the grown-ups actually talk talking move away okay um but they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the teachers both listening to them and asking them questions and all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers so when they saw him they were amazed and his mother said to him son why have you done this to us Look, your father and I have sought you, you anxiously. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not. And I want you to understand this. It says here, did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. I want you guys to understand this. He said, did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. And verse 51 said, then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And verse 52 said, and this is our verse for today. And Jesus increased in wisdom in stature, and in favor with God and men. Let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Father God in heaven, here we are once again. I do not have a game plan, but this is not about my game. This is about your game. May you fill me with your Holy Spirit so that so I could deliver your message to your people. In Jesus' name we pray, you. amen. Amen. So, let's talk. I was, I was born a Seventh-day Adventist. I grew up a Seventh-day Adventist. And it's up until recently that, of several years ago, that I truly understand what it means to be a Christian. Are you guys with me? For some reason... For some reason, it's either the way the message is being, is being preached is either flawed or outdated. Are you guys with me today? And I'm, I'm not here to bash anything. We, this is one of the things that we like about vision is that we talk real stuff, okay? And, and you know, at some point, I will be speaking. You guys are going to be able to ask me questions. Here's my thought about religion. Um, so you guys understand. Diane, can I use this? Yeah. Okay. What is this, guys? A bottle of what? Water. So this is uh, it's ice Ken Kenyan. Looks like looks like it's pretty 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 good water. So remember the woman at the well. Remember that, right? And then what actually happened? Jesus said, "I can give you." A water that no one else can actually give you, right? Remember that, right? My understanding of re religion now is 
Religion is like a stream of water, right? It's like a source, uh, a, a spring, a water spring, right? Because this is where, uh, have you guys ever had Poland Springs, right? So Poland Spring, they say they got it from some spring in, in Maine, okay? So what happened is that Jesus is the water, is, is the living water, right? But the Bible said we need to go and preach the, the gospel to the world, right? Because remember, the gospel was for the Jews. Re re remember that, right? So what ended up happening is when the Jews did not accept him, so what happened? Now, we became, we all became children of God, right? So the gospel had to be preached to us. So here's what happened. What happened is that there is a stream of water, which is the, the living wa water. Then, then came religion, all right? So we are doing everything fine. Everything is, is good. So it says, go and preach unto the world, right? And baptizing them and, and you know, make, turning them into disciples, right? Then religion came. And religion, with good intent, said, we need to do what the Lord has asked us to do, which is to bring the gospel to the world, right? So the way we're going to do it, because the whole idea is to bring the world to the gospel. Jesus said, no, 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 no. We're going to bring the gospel to the world. So what happened is that you have a company like um, Ice Canyon. So let me tell you the ingredient, okay? So, man, this is really small. Oh, wow. Hold on. So, so what's the in ingredient here? So the ingredient is a spring, spring water. A uh, bunch of stuff, but it's mostly spring water, okay? It's fine. And, and does it taste just like water? Yes. Okay, so it's probably filtered, right? So the religion that I, believe, that I belong to, which is the Seventh-day Adventist church, they said we are going to take a regular bottle. We're just going to go to the, to the source. We are going to fill it up, right? And we are going to make it convenient for people to drink the water. Right? And I'm talking about me. This is my religion. I believe in the Seventh-day Adventist message because this is, to me, the only message that follows everything that's in the Bible. Okay? So this may be filtered. Okay, I don't know why. I mean, they kind of filter it because then there could be some bacteria. Okay? But this is just regular water. This is the, the first one. Then, thank you. Then you have another religion and says, you know what? How about if we mix it up a little bit? How about if we put something in it, some kind of additive, and we're going to call it uh, vitamin water? And make people think that the vitamin is going you know, to make you a little bit different. This is a different part of religion. Okay? Then you have another and understand, vitamin water is water, right? It's water, right? Then you have another water, uh, you have another company called Red Bull. They said, you know what? How about if we take the same water, water and we make, it, we make it carbonated and we make it in a way that make people think that it, it gives them energy? That's a different type of religion. And then now you start having... Understand, everything comes, it's the liquid, right? Everything that you see is water, but everybody is adding. And then now you have monster drink, right? You, you got some stuff that can kill you in the long term. But this is my understanding of religion. That spring wa water that's there, all, all of a sudden becomes monster drink, becomes um, Coca-Cola, so there's so many confusion in the world, and this is what so many times when people come to the church, if we don't do our job, they ended up leaving. Do you know how many people that got baptized that I can tell you I don't even see them anymore? Why? Because there's so many confusion in religion. So here's what's going to happen today. Today we are going to talk about something that is important, that we don't talk about. We have this idea that the way the message is being preached is that when you hear about preaching the gospel, you hear about repent, right? Have you heard that? If you don't repent, uh, you will not make it to heaven, right? It's all about repentance, right? 
Now, some people would say, repenting from what? If I don't know what, I, what I've done, what do I need to repent from? And this is why people block that, right? Because they're like, okay, what do you want me? What have I done? I need to know what have I done to repent. You know, I went to the train station not, not too long ago, and there's this guy, he has his, his microphone making a lot of noise. You need to repent if you don't, you know, the, the, you know, the, uh, Jesus is, is going to come. And, and everybody's just like looking at him. It doesn't make any sense. So the first thing is repent. The second thing is, not only they want you to repent, they want you to change. Okay? Great. You know what? Because that's what the gospel is. Change. And then the third thing is to become. To become a child of, of God. Right? Great. But there's one thing that we forget. And I think this is one thing that's really affecting the church. That's affecting the youth. Because we have this idea that we want everything to happen like microwave. We want everything to happen that when we expect somebody to come to the church, we expect them to come, get baptized, and become a saint the next day. The reality is this is not what the gospel intended to be. Are you with me? This is not what it is. Listen to, to, to what it says. It says, in Jesus, so in, verse, in Luke 2 verse 52. Oh, by, by the way, Luke is here. Luke, right? Luke, Luke I, I did not pick it because you were, you were here, but Luke is here. So Luke 2 verse 52 says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, right? And in favor with God. There's a version that says, And Jesus grew. So what's missing here between change, uh, repent, change, and become what's missing can somebody tell me what growth growth right when we see growth we see growth right so how do we grow what what how do you how do you see growth what what is growth how do you grow T can somebody tell me the whole process of grow growing yes i, I hold on hold So I was just saying that um, you just like learn, like do your research to grow. Uh huh. That's it. Okay. So she said, do your research, okay, which is actually good. That's that. That was a perfect statement. You know why? Because if we go into verse forty-six, what does it say? He said, now. So it was that after three, three, they they found him in the temple. Sitting in the midst of teachers, right? What is growth? Growth is a process. It's, it's a process where you come from one cycle to the next cycle, right? I remember when I got baptized. I'll never forget that. I got, that, I got baptized on a Saturday afternoon. So the following Saturday, I was at, uh, because I got baptized at another church. We were running. I was like 14. I, I, I was actually 12. And I was running around the church. Man, I got scolded. You just got baptized. Kid that got baptized. I'm not supposed to be running around. I was running around the church. I wasn't doing anything sinful. I mean, I was running. I mean, yeah, I mean, you have to respect God's church. But I was a kid. And the expectation was the fact that I got baptized, I need to stop being a kid. I need to stop running. Are you guys with me? This idea that we are living in an age where we forgot the fundamental issue. The fundamental issue is that, yes, we need to repent. Yes, we need to change and we need to become. But between repent, in between right here,
there is the aspect of growth. Because without growth, your spiritual life will be unsustainable. You guys un un understand that? There are people that come to church, they got baptized, and then after three months, they're gone. You don't see them anymore. Why do you think that? Because they never had a chance to grow. You know, we planted a, uh, a, uh, an apple tree about nine years ago. The first year, there was no apple. Actually, the, the first year, we, we thought that tree was going to die. The second year, and then we start getting fruit by like about eight. I think the first year, it gave us eight apples. And then it grew and grew. Now, it's not like Bernard's apple tree. <laughs> it's an apple tree. But, oh, is, is that? Apple tree is dead? Oh, my God. What have you guys done? <laughs> is this so? So, Bernard. Bernard had a huge apple tree, but our apple tree, it took us years until now. I think Andrew is actually eating them, right? But 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 the apple tree now is finally giving fruit. This is why, my dear friend, when you are in the church, the Bible says you do not judge. Okay? There are certain people, the way God deals with them. He deals with other people differently. Are you are you with me? For example, we, 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 we're such a judgmental man, society. You have somebody that has an that has an addiction, right? So let's say the the, the person has a smoking addiction, all right. And all we do is oh that that brother or sister, all he does is just smoke, right? You don't understand. What brought that brother to that point where he or she has to smoke? You have no idea. You have no clue. And this is why at some point when you understand that the spiritual life is not a life of flicking your finger, it, it changes. This is a life of growth. Because at some point when you get to a level, you don't need to tell that brother, when he gets to that maturity, that spiritual maturity, you don't need to tell him that he needs to stop smoking. Because automatically the Holy Spirit is going to work with him. Are you guys with me? We need to understand that we need to stop judging people. Because some people, it might take them a year. Some people might take them 10 years. Some people, it might take them 20 to 40 years until God can deal with them. God can deal with them. It says in Jesus grew in, in what? In wisdom. Wisdom, right? Are you guys with me? In wisdom. When we talk about wisdom, what do we see? Anybody? Wisdom. Huh? Wise, okay. But what is wisdom? Anybody, please, let's, let's just talk. Slow to react. Huh? Slow to react. Slow to react. Yes, Casey? Um, using your knowledge in a way that is beneficial to yourself and others. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Wisdom. So using your knowledge, right? So remember in verse 46, it says Jesus was what? He was hanging out with what? Huh? Who was he hanging out with? Teachers, right? Yeah. So questions. Um. If you want to be wise, what do you need to do? Huh? What? What did you say? What, what, what did you just say? I, I, I cannot hear. Can, can you finish? What? It's okay. Oh, it's good. No. Uh, we need to. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, man. This is. I'm telling you guys. This is going to be fun. I'm, I'm telling you. This is going to be fun. When you are wise, what? what uh, how do you get to become wise? Really? Ooh, anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, anyone else? Uh, how, so, so who was Jesus hanging with? Teachers, right? So, but it says in verse 52 that he grew in what? In wisdom. So what does that mean? What does it say? You want to be wise? You better choose the people that you hang with wisely. Are you with me? 
I'm telling you, this, this is going to be fun. Look, guys, the Bible is a fun thing, man. The people you hang with will determine your future. You know, I heard some, I've, I've watched something on Facebook that, that, that say, if, if you hang with five millionaires, you're, you're going to be the sixth one. Right? Yeah, you know, somebody say, yeah. <laughs> because you, you, you know what? The person, the, your environment can dictate your future. If you hang out with losers, guess what you're going to be? Yeah, right? Right? Jesus was hanging out with what? With teachers. To be wise, it means to acquire knowledge. Being wise means when somebody is wise, you've gone through certain experience in life. You know, let me give you um, an example. <laughs> My kids think that I drive like a grandma, right? Right? Where, where is Nathan? Right, Drew? Do I, how do I drive? Actually, uh, how do I drive, guy? Huh? Okay, but you guys don't know me. I was the type of guy that I used to drive. I used to do the lowest I used to, to go is 90 on the highway. That was back in, in, in the days. Like he's, he's laughing. He's like, yeah, you know. What, do you, do you go faster? You, you go faster? Okay. So, you... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, chill, man, because you know what I'm saying, man, that, that can mess up your license. But here is my point. Here is my point, guys. Over time, I've grown to understand that it's stupid to go fast. And I'm going to tell you why, right? I've become wiser. So here's why that you should not go fast. Number one, if you go fast, you can kill people, right? Because, you know, cars, listen, you guys don't understand Anything can happen. Something can break in, in that car. I mean, yeah, it, it's great, but so in the back of my mind, something can actually happen. So the faster you go, the less chances you have of the less survival ch chances that you have. Number two, do you guys know that if you go above 60 miles per hour, you ended up burning about 25% more gas than if you were underneath? So what does that mean? If you go faster, it affects what? Your pocket, right? It's not because I'm, I'm getting old. It's because, you know what? I'm wiser now. And then number three, what's important is that if you drive fast, what happened? You get tickets, right? Do you know when you get tickets, it can be very expensive? Your insurance goes up, right? And then you, if you're not lucky, you may even lose that license. And if you lose that license, that could be your livelihood. Because, you know, especially if you live in the Lemonster or... Sterling or Fitchburg. I mean, Boston, you'll have the tea. It's fine, you know what I'm saying? But uh, around here, it's either you have somebody to, to take you to work. That's your livelihood. Bus 11, yeah, yeah. Well, when, when you guys go, yeah, exactly. That's the point, right? So what ended up happening is that I wised up, right? And uh, now, you know, I, I used to have a fast car. It was very fast. And when, when I got rid of it, I ended up buying two cars that are so slow. But it's slow, right? It's slow. But it's safe, it's good on gas, <laughs> and it's comfortable. That's wisdom because these things, listen, going fast is great, but what does it do? It, it, what, right? I mean, what? Just, just to satisfy your ego, Right? And then you ended up burning gas, you ended up, you could get in, in, into a car accident. So the smart things to do when you get to a point in your life, you become wiser. And it's the same thing. When you come to a level of maturity in your spiritual life, you become wiser. And you know what that means? People are going to see a different person in you. That doesn't mean you will not make mistakes. Let's, let's be clear. Everybody will make mistakes. But it's going to be what it is, which is a mistake. It will not be a trend. You guys don't understand between an accident and a trend? An accident is things happen. We all make mistakes, right? We all sing and fell short of the glory of God, right? But trend is something that keeps on repeating itself over and over. So we make mistakes. But when you get to that spiritual level, to spiritual maturity, you, no longer, you are no longer assigned to trend. 
But accidents do happen. Abraham, David, you know, they, they all made mistakes. When you get to that spiritual maturity, things that you used to do means nothing to you. Um, my mother always say, uh, she, she would say in Creole, she, she, she would say, don't get stuck on stupid. Okay? Do not get stuck on stupid. Which means if something is stupid, just move on. Don't even entertain it. Don't even entertain it. So when you become to that spiritual level, right, you don't get stuck on stupid. You know, somebody may come at you trying to be like, yeah, whatever, man. Because to you, that doesn't matter. And that's what it is when it comes to spiritual maturity. So what is the other thing? It says, in Jesus grew in, in what? In what? In stature, right? In stature. Now, when we see stature, what do we see, guys? What is stature? Anybody? What is stature? Huh? Go ahead. The what? Status. Status. Yes, yes. Um, stature. So now you have physical stature and you have social stature, right? So what is physical stature? So Kevin Durant, he's a seven feet tall guy, right? Right? He has a tall stature, right? When, when he's standing, you're like, oh my gosh, this, this, this guy is like a giant, right? This is a physical stature. But you also have social stature. You also have economic stature, right? But you also have spiritual stature. Stature is somebody with high esteem. Somebody that when people look at them, they're like, wow, you know, this is like, like it's, the person is striking, right? Jesus grew in stature, which means the people that he was hanging with, when they look at him now, they don't just see a 12-year-old boy. They saw somebody who could be a teacher, right? Just because you're young doesn't mean you are less than some adults who are doing foolish stuff. Are we clear? Just because you're young doesn't mean, and you know what, I'm finally happy that the church is recognizes that the church is the church. We, you guys are no longer the church of tomorrow. You guys are the church of today. You guys are the church of today. There was a time, you know, the church never give you guys a chance. They never give the, they never give the youth a chance to participate. This is why vision is so great, because this is your church. It's yours. We're not just giving you a little piece where, you know, we give you, what, one, one Sabbath a month or one Sabbath a quarter for youth, youth day. It's your church. It's yours. And the way we talk, the way we preach is different because the reality is your understanding is different than the way other people think things or, or, or just absorb things. So stature means, your spiritual stature means how you present yourself. How do you present yourself? How are you? Are you somebody in the church that the moment you, you walk in, everybody is afraid of you? You know, there are people that are in the church. They've been in the church for years and they never change. There is a guy at a church. Everybody loves them. He is like, everybody, he is like one of the best Christians in, in the world. But he has a specific spot that he, sat, he sits um, in, in the back. One Sabbath, somebody came. He was late. Somebody came and took that spot. Boy, you thought he was a devil. In its, the guy was so enraged for that day. Now, this is the guy that everybody thinks is a great Christian, right? But this guy did not have the love of God in his heart to understand that this is, a, this is for like two hours. Who cares, man? Just go someplace else. But that's usually what actually happened. And what is the last one so we could finish? It says, right, and Jesus grew in stature and in grace, right? This one says in favor with God and men, in grace. When we see favor, what do we see? Somebody talk, talk to, to me. What is favor? What is grace? What is grace? Huh? Things you don't deserve. He grew in grace, in favor. And it doesn't just say with God, right? It says with men. Do you know how hard it is to grow in favor with men? <laughs> you, you, you guys understand that? You know how hard it is to grow in favor with men? It's very hard. Because we are living in, the, in a society where everybody speaks for themselves, right? And am I wrong? We are living in a selfish society. 
This afternoon, the point of our little talk is we need to think about what's important is that in the church, when you see somebody struggling with something, or when you see somebody is going through something, this could be part of their growth process. And if you're struggling with something, if there's something that's, that's, that's really tough, it's not because God has forgotten about you. It's because for you, this is part of your growth process. Are you with me? You know, this uh, week, I've, have you guys done the lesson this, this past week? This week? Uh, the lesson was about whom? About Joseph, right? Right? And, and we, were, we were having a conversation and, and uh, somebody said, why did God allow Joseph to go through some rough time? Why did God allow Joseph to go through some rough time? Because, you, you know, God is God, right? All he had to do, he could have just snapped his, his finger and Joseph could have been the, the prince of Egypt, right? But why did God allow him to go through some rough time? Why? Can somebody tell me why? Yes? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we humble. Yeah, go, go ahead, please. Yeah. He was able to relate to others. Ooh. Ooh. My bro what? What? That, that, that is, is, is that right? So 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 sometimes what why do we go through tough times? We go through tough times because God wants us to learn, just like you said. Joseph had to be humbled. Um <laughs> So, if you never understand poverty, if you never understand poverty, no, if you never went, if you never gone through poverty, you will never understand what a poor person is going through. Do, do, do you guys understand that? If you put a rich person on top who never had money issues, they won't care about you because they don't know what you're going through. You know, I remember when I was going through, um, I used to work for a company and they, I was being trained to be an executive, right? And I was being trained to become a healthcare uh, ex executive and I'll never forget that. So here, here I am, you know, I, you know I, have, I have a bachelor, I have an MBA and, and I, I walked in and, and, and they said, yeah, we are going to train you, right? And that was my first day. <laughs> So I walked in, so I have my tie, I look good. And he said, okay, he said, so um, the way we do things here, uh, we are, you're going to go through each department so you understand what your employees go through on a daily basis. I'm like, okay, cool, cool, you know. So my first department was a maintenance department, right? And it just happened that day it was snowing, right? So here I am, I have my tie, my suit, and everything looking good. And then uh, they said, okay, you are going to work with a maintenance uh, director. Now, this guy ended up becoming my employee, right? So I was, I'm like, Dave, so what, what are we going to do? He's like, okay, he say, here, here is a shovel, go on the roof and, and shovel the snow off the roof. That was my first assignment. And you know what? I did not have any snow boots. I had to go on the roof and shovel the snow up the roof. It was the, it was the most humbling experience. But you know what? These experiences is what made me, that contributed to my success. Because I understand what my employees go through. Sometimes when God wants to push you up there, he makes you go through a lot so he can build your character, right? He can build it. Look at David. You know, we actually talk about the David. Do you guys understand that David was, David killed Goliath. So David was a big guy in the, um, in the court of, of King, King Saul. But David had to get kicked out. Do you guys understand that David was in the wilderness, right? Am I right? Right? He was in the wilderness for a long time, right? Do you guys understand that the fact that the, David became one of, I think, the greatest king that Israel ever had. Can you tell me why David became such a great king? 
Anybody? Anybody? Why did David become such a great king? That's true. Yep, absolutely. I mean, yeah, yeah yes, yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He had. He. He. He had that connection with God, right? But also another thing. Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm. I'm, I'm sorry. But both of you guys. It's fine. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, 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 Nate. Because practically speaking, if you're a king, you have to know your land. Okay. <laughs> so David, what he did was he got dragged throughout the entire country, running away from Saul. So as king, he knew his country inside and out. For every single facet, think about where he traveled. He traveled with the priest. The priest got killed. He went to, to Nabal, and then he had Abigail, and then that whole situation, so he knew how to deal with the rich people. He had to go and understand what it was like running away with armies to the point where he went and fought with his enemies that he would eventually slaughter later on in his in his empire. Mm -hmm. He knew his kingdom like the back of his hand due to the fact that he had been dragged around the wilderness for seven years. That it, 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 one more thing too that 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 we forgot, right? It's there 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 is something say it's when things are tough that you know who your real friends are, right? Right? So do you know when David was running into the wilderness, he was able to know who his real friends were, right? So because of the fact that he was, because look, when things are tough, that's when you know who your real friends are, right? Be, be, you know, listen, when things are good, you got plenty of friends. Life is great. I mean, you know, but the moment that they can, you, they can, they cannot, their friends, these, these bad friends are like ticks, right? They, they, they're there to suck you up. But once that's done, once they, once they cannot suck anything off of you, they're like, bye-bye. But David, while he was in the wilderness, he was able to know the people that stuck with you in tough times, these are your real friends. And God wanted to show David exactly that. Not only he stuck with God, but also the fact that he was running in the wilderness wilderness he know the whole landscape so sometimes when you're going through some tough times it's not because god abandoned you it's because the plan that god has for you he wants you to understand the whole landscape are you with me he wants you to understand the whole landscape so when he gets you to the place that you need to be you'll be ready you'll be ready because david not only because now david were not afraid because the guys who were with him he said, I can trust you because you were with me in the tough time and you're going to be with me in the good times. Because just because somebody is with you in the good times, you know, that doesn't mean they're going to be with you in the bad times. And, and this is why the whole idea is, is that this is part of the growth process. Not just only financial or, or um, you know, health-wise, but spiritually. A lot of you guys, and, and I'm having this conversation with us, is that in your spiritual life, things are not going to be all rosy at all time. You're going to fall. You're going to make mistakes. You, you guys understand me? A lot of people, when they make mistakes, you know what they actually do? They bolt it out. They leave the church. The reality is, other than Jesus, if we look at all the heroes in the Bible, they all faltered at some point in their life. For so many times, we, the way, and in, in this needs to change. The church, the way we deliver the message needs to change. I have seen so many people getting baptized in the church and they leave. Because the pressure we put on them to change from day one is the most flawed concept of it. The Bible said, give them the message and we pray with them, we work with them, and let the Holy Spirit do its work. We're not here to change people. Matter of fact, we cannot change ourselves. What, what makes you think we can change people? 
Our job is not to change people. Our job is not to criticize people. Our job is not to judge people. But our job is to support people. Are you with me? When you see a brother or a sister is going through some tough time, okay, you can counsel them. You can talk to them. But it's not your job to judge them. You, 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 you see, I've seen a lot of improvement in my spiritual life. The way I used to think. I don't think like that. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not even there. But sometimes as you grow, as you mature spiritually, you think differently. You think differently because you see things in a different way. You know, the verse that um, um, Matthew read, he says, when I was a child, what happened? I speak like what? But when I become an adult, what do I do? I speak like an adult, right? This is what you call spiritual maturity. I'm going to tell you today that our church is still speaking as a child. We need to come to a point where we need to speak as a mature person. We need to have the tough conversation. We need to talk to our folks. You know, things have changed. You know, there was a point where if somebody gets pregnant in the church, the person is been for life. I kid you not. And, and what I'm so happy with is the fact that we see that people are finally understanding the concept of grace. Do you guys know what grace is? Grace is something that, that we do not deserve. We do not deserve it. You know, I used to be at a church, man. I remember actually, you see, that, that, that's actually personal to me. Uh, where something happened and somebody got pregnant and, um, you know, people that you never used to see at church. But for that Saturday afternoon, we were having church business meeting. The church was packed because they came to stone that person. And you know the funny thing is, some of these people, they were getting other people's pregnant. But it was a spectacle. This is how the church used to be. Things have changed. Now we need to get to a moment where we need to think about grace. When somebody makes a mistake, when somebody is, is falling down, instead of criticizing them, instead of judging them, what do we do? We support them. We said, it's okay, man. It's all good. It's all good, man. It's all good. And once we start seeing that, my dear friend, when people come into our church, they're going to see love. They're going to feel the love. None of us in here are perfect. Guys, if you think you are, you're fooling yourself. I'm, I'm the least perfect person, per, person here, but that's not what God is looking at. God is looking at my heart. He sees that every day I'm striving to be a better Christian. Amen? Amen. And this is what we are to be. So the conversation we had this morning was about what? Was about what? What was it about? Growth, right? Growth. It's not about baptizing people. It's not just only about, it's about growth. We cannot expect people to, in everything that we, we, we do, the baby is born, the baby needs to grow, right? The baby does not come on baby to adult, does it? It doesn't. The baby has to grow. Just like Kenny was saying, now um, his, his girl is running, but, you know, it, it, she, she started as a baby and grow. Is the same thing for our spiritual life. So this afternoon, I want you to understand that God is looking to our growth. Whatever you're going through, don't throw it away. Don't say, oh my gosh, God, I don't think I can do this. This is part of the process. Because if that process does not exist, your spiritual life would be unsustainable. Unsustainable. You know, there was a story uh, before I end. There is a, uh, you, you guys know that the um, ducks, is it ducks, right? Um, how do you call it? Ducks, right? Ducks, they, 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 they migrate in the, in the winter. Uh, they, they, they migrate from the north to the south. Uh, geese, I'm sorry, geese. The geese migrates from the north to, to the south. So by November, they actually migrate uh, south. And there was a, it, it was just a story where, so what they do, 
they go around, they work it through, and they, they eat, they eat some good stuff so they could have the energy to fly. But there was one doc who decided that he did not want to wanna work. He said, you know what, I'm not going to work. You know what I'm saying? Because when the time comes, I'm just going to work it and I'm, I'm just going to fly. So what ended up happening though, the day that they were going to fly, there were no food. So what he did, he was running around, there was a bunch of car manure, and he says, you know what, I'm going to feast on the car manure. And he said, I should be fine. So what they usually do, they go up a ledge so they could take off. So he's like, okay, I'm fine. So he ate the common money away because everybody's full. So he went up there, but what ended up happening when he got up there, the common manure made him sick. And he could not fly. He had to stay behind. For many, the point is, for so many people is that don't expect things to happen like this. Sometimes it takes work for things to happen because if you do it like fast food, and you think that it's going to happen, when you get up there, you're going to be full of it. <laughs> I know, I know. Diane, D Diane wanted me to say it, right? You're going to be full of it, right? It, it, this, is, this is what happened. A lot of people, guys, they're full of it. Right? They're full of it. They're full of the wrong thing, of the wrong food. And I think for many folks, we're being fed the wrong thing. We're being fed car manure. No. We need to come to a point where we are being fed the real thing, man. The real thing. Thing that is going to make us grow. So that tomorrow, you guys are going to be running the church where I can sit back and just chill. And, you know, I'm going to be chilling with my grandson and granddaughter, Nathan and Andrew. Um, so the whole idea is, you guys can stay in the church, and you guys can run the church, because you guys are the church. You guys are not the future of the church. You're the church today. But you need to understand that there is that level of growth. So whatever you go going through, guys, for us to finish, I'm going to ask the priest him to please come up, is understand that part of your spiritual life, the thing that's the most important, and, and you know, this is, one verse that show you the whole, that verse, it has 14 words of, in it. It show you the whole aspect of Jesus' life. Can you believe that? And Jesus grew in stature, in wisdom, in stature, and in, 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 in grace before God and man. So people need to see the growth um, in us. We need to come to a point, we need to see, they need to see the spiritual maturity. You know, one thing that I don't want to hear, oh, this is how so-and-so is. No. If there's something in you that's jacked up, you need to pray God to get rid of it. That's where spiritual maturity comes. I know some, some folks, oh, this is who I am, so I'm, I'm old now, I'm never going to change. Well, if you don't change, you may not be able to make it to heaven, buddy. It would be all a waste. So this afternoon, I'm praying you, ask God to give you the Holy Spirit. And how do you grow? The way you grow is by having a deeper relationship with God. Amen? By consulting with Him every day. You know, one of the things that's important, guys, do your Sabbath school lesson. Do you guys do your Sabbath school lesson? Hello? Do you guys do your Sabbath school lesson? I, I'm going to challenge you for one month. Do your Sabbath school lesson every day for one month. I challenge you. You'll be amazed what happened to your spiritual life. You, okay. You don't even have to. Okay. And I know you're supposed to read your Bible, but the reality is we don't read our Bible every day. Let's, let's just be real, right? We don't. But the Sabbath school lesson, if you can say for one month, say, you know what? For one month, I'm going to read it. I'm not even going to read my Bible. You'll be amazed what happened to your spiritual life. You'll be amazed what happened to your faith. If you're going through some tough, tough things, you'll be amazed how things change, how your mind change, because the Holy Spirit is going to be guiding you. Amen? So we are going to uh, sing, hide me now under your wings so we could finish. And I will, I, I'm going to ask you to please stand up with us so we can finish the service. Hide me now 
under your wing. Cover me. Cover me within your mighty hand. When the ocean rise, when the oceans rise and thunders roll, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are. When the oceans ride, when the oceans rise and thunders roll, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. Amen. Let's bow our head. Father God, we want to thank you for allowing us to have this conversation. For us to understand that in spite of what we go through, that we know that you have a plan for us. That we understand that we need to get to that growth moment, growth process. So we get, we get to where we want to go. Because you're still working with us to make us do what you want us to be, Father God. Be with us. May we are empowered by your Holy Spirit, not only today, but throughout the whole week, so that we may come back next week and we can worship and praise you together, Father God. Be with us, bless us. Forgive us of all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray you, amen. Happy Sabbath, and we'll see you next Saturday. And uh, as usually, we have uh, something called V+. Plus. Where we just sing, we just, it's, it's like we're just re rehearsing. So if you want to come and sing with us, that will be great. But we're just going to sing song together and just give God the glory and the praise. Amen. I am a friend of God. 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 He calls me friend. Who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. Is it true? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me, how you love me. It's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing. I am a friend of God, I am a friend of God, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God, He calls me friend. I am a friend of God, I am a friend. Of God, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. Is it true? Is it true? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm a friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. 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 He calls me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you are 
have called me friend God Almighty Lord of glory you have called me friend God Almighty God Almighty Lord of glory you have called me friend God Almighty Lord of glory you have called me friend I am a friend of God I am a friend of God One more time, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me King, give him the glory. One more time, we sing the praises. We sing the praises to our King, for He is a King. We sing the praises to our King. One more time, we sing the praises to our King, for He is a King. Praises to our King. Give him the glory. Give him the glory, for He is a Glory for Give him the glory for he is a king. Give him the glory. Oh, hell, oh, hell, King Jesus. Oh, hell, oh, hell, Emmanuel. All right. Oh, hey, oh, hey, King Jesus. Oh, oh, hey, All right. Here and here and here and yes, he does. Oh, yes, he does. Forever and evermore, he reigns, King of kings, Lord of lords, forever, soprano, he reigns forever, yeah, he reigns, yes, he does, he reigns, and, uh, and evermore, I told, he reigns forever, he reigns, hallelujah, hallelujah, and ever. Come on, tell us. He is. He is. He is. 
Lord, oh Lord, and ever here and here, here and here and here, here and here and here and here and forever. One more time, here, here and here and here and forever, here and here and here and forever. Hey, we declare. We believe, we receive it, we walk in faith, we walk in faith, believe in faith forevermore. He reigns forever. Hey, he reigns forever. We believe it, we believe it. He is king of our lives and ever. Oh, hell, oh, hell, King Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's up, sister? <laughs> Thank you.